Everybody, welcome back. We're reading Gaius Julius Caesar's The Gallic Wars from page 93, paragraph LBI. Alright, and this was in, you know, the famous, infamous, glorious Caesar of ancient Rome. When he perceived that they were coming to him voluntarily, that on the one side the Senones and the Carnutes were stimulated by their consciousness of guilt, on the other side the Nervi and the Aduatuci were preparing war against the Romans, and that forces of volunteers would not be wanting to him if he began to advance from his own territories. He proclaims an armed council, this according to the custom of the Gauls, is the commencement of war, at which by a common law all the youth were wont to assemble in arms. Whoever of them comes last is killed in the sight of the whole assembly after being racked with every torture. Dang, the Gauls don't play. Look at that. Whoever comes last when they're called to get their arms ready to go to war is literally racked and tortured in front of everyone. So when it's time to go, it's time to go. Don't dilly-dally. Get over here. Wow. Wow, the Gauls don't play. In that council, he declares certain Gerrix, the leader of the other faction, his own son-in-law, whom we have above mentioned as having embraced the protection of Caesar and never having deserted him, an enemy and confiscates his property. Wow. So Singerix gets upset with his son-in-law because he declared for Caesar, straight up takes his property. When these things are finished, he asserts in the council that he, invited by the Senones and the Carnutes and several other states of Gaul, was about to march thither through the territories of the Remi, territories of the Remi, devastate their lands and attack the camp of Labinius. Before he does that, he informs them of what he desires to be done. Okay, paragraph LVII. Labinius, since he was confining himself within a camp strongly fortified by the nature of the ground and by art, had no apprehensions as to his own and the legion's danger, but was devising that he might throw away no opportunity of conducting the war successfully. Accordingly, the speech of Indutriomaris, which he had delivered in the council, Having been made known to him by Sutingeterix and his allies, he sends messengers to the neighboring states and summons horse from all quarters. He appoints to them a fixed day for assembling. In the meantime, in Dutiomaras, with all his cavalry, nearly every day used to parade close to his Labinius's camp at one time that he might inform himself of the situation of the camp. At another time, for the purpose of conferring with or of intimidating him. Well, that's interesting. Wow. So, Indutriomaris is straight up flexing on Labinius and his camp by setting up and having his cavalry kind of be around to where if there's a scout, they'll be seen and they'll report. And, you know, that's going to make them a little bit on their heels in a sense. Pump that adrenaline. Labinius confined his men within the fortifications and promoted the enemy's belief of his fear by whatever methods he could. Mm. Paragraph LVIII. Since Intutiomaris was daily advancing up to the camp with greater defiance, <laughs> he's inching closer. All the cavalry of the neighboring states, which he, Labinius, had taken care of to have sent for, having been admitted in one night, he confined all his men within the camp by guards with such great strictness that the fact could by no means be reported or carried to the Treviri. In the meanwhile, Indutiomaris, according to his daily practice, advances up to the camp and spends a great part of the day there. Whew, so he's at the camp now. His horse cast their weapons, and with very insulting language, <laughs> call out our men to battle. Oh my gosh. 
So like throwing insults, they're going up to the camp. You know, eh, come out, whatever they're saying, right? Ah, oh, they're not afraid. No reply being given by our men. The enemy, when they thought proper, depart towards evening in a disorderly and scattered manner. Labinius unexpectedly sends out all the cavalry by two gates. He gives this command and prohibition that when the enemy should be terrified and put to flight, which he foresaw would happen as it did, they should all make for Indutriomaris. Oh, okay. So they did a surprise attack. Look, Labinius sends out the cavalry unexpectedly, right? So, okay. And then, so if the people, because remember they're outside the camp, they get nervous that they start scattering around and not keeping a good formation. Labinius has ordered his men to try to murk Indutriomaris. Ah, like that's the pre that's the prime target basically, and no one, wound, hold on, and no one wound any man before he should have seen him slain. <gasps> Look at that! So they tell him, don't attack anyone else. The main target for all of us to get is the leader. Think about that. Don't he's like, don't waste time going for anyone else. Head for that guy. Because he was unwilling that he should escape, in consequence of gaining time by the delay occasioned by the pursuit of the rest, he offers great rewards for those who should kill him. Well, that'll give him an incentive, right? He sends up the cohorts as a relief to the horse. The issue justifies the policy of the man, and since all aimed at one, all aimed at one, <laughs> in Tutiomaris is slain. Oh, having been overtaken at the very ford of the river, and his head is carried to the camp. The horse, when returning, pursue and slay all whom they can. This affair having been known, all the forces of the Eubarons and the Nervi, which had assembled, depart. And for a short time after this action, Caesar was less harassed in the government of Gaul. Wow, so his head was straight up presented and brought to the camp wow that's clever i i mean they went up to the camp like talking smack come on out right and they're throwing insults and then they're like okay don't answer them back we're gonna surprise them send out the cavalry but instead of slaying and like letting their leader hold back and observe what's going on to give more commands all of us is basically just head for him and then on the way back, once we've all succeeded and taken off his head, then you can, you know, scrape up a few on the way back, but then come back into the fortified camp. Clever. Very clever. <laughs> Labinius, is, he, he did this very smart thing. Wow. Very cool.